Hi there, and welcome to a tutorial on how to use scenes in Adobe Animate CC, formerly known as Flash Professional CC. Before we get started, I should point out that you can't use scenes with an HTML5 document. So if you're making something for the web, scenes don't work. It's something that HTML5 at the time of making this video doesn't support. So you can only use scenes in ActionScript 3 documents. So if you're making something for Flash Player, which is unlikely, or if you're making something for video, scenes are great. But if you're making a web banner or something like that in HTML5, scenes do not work. So my students often hand in documents which have a quadrillion layers in them. You can see here, this is a job I did for Relate. And there are quite a lot of layers, but I've, I've managed to manage it to an amount that will easily fit within my screen when I'm working on my nice big monitor. Scenes are a really good way of managing long animations with lots and lots of layers into nice bite-sized chunks. So over here, I've got my scene panel. You can get to this by window and going to scene, or you can do shift F2. I can go to my first scene and I've got a logo fading in. And then in our second scene, it's called Two Doctors. And you can see this is the first scene of the animation, which stops here as the character's getting up and walking away. Let's go to our next scene. If we keep an eye on how many layers we've got here, we've got even more in this scene. And if I wasn't using scenes, all of these layers, let me just dial that up. All of these layers would have to be in the previous scene, two doctors, and it would go on for absolutely ages. And it becomes unmanageable to have that many layers when you've got a lot of complex action. So scenes are a really useful way of splitting that up. So let's have a look at how to use them. So if we create a new document, like so, you can see that we start off with a single scene called scene one. And we can draw a rectangle in there or something. And we can make that last for 50 frames. I'm going to hit F5. And we might want to have a scene after this that features a circle, for example. It doesn't sound like a very interesting animation to me, but it's just for an example. So we go down to the bottom of our scene panel and we click on this add scene button. Click on that. And we get a scene called scene two. I'm going to call that circle. And I'm going to draw a circle in there. Very exciting. I'm going to rename scene one square. And I'm going to click on my circle scene and make that 50 frames long as well with F5. So I've decided that I want my circle scene to come before my square scene. And if I wasn't using scenes, I'd have to cut the frames, kind of paste them back in before the part with the square in it. But when we're using scenes, I can just drag the order and pull my circle scene above my square. And now it will play beforehand. I might think, hey, this circle scene is so great that I want to reuse it after my square scene. So I'm going to click on my circle scene and go down to the bottom and click on this duplicate scene option here. And then we get circle copy. I can drag that after my square and circle revenge. So we've got another scene of 50 frames with our circle there. So if I go to control and do test, you can see we have circle, then a square, then a circle again. Perhaps pedantic people would tell me that's actually a rectangle and not a square. So that's how you use scenes, and I'd recommend you use it to make your workflow loads simpler.